22, 2002, 2001, I walked into committee. You know, you walk into committee, you've had all these stories about committee, you've had everything that you'd, hear, you'd want to hear. And then the first thing you hear when you get into committee is people singing. You know, there's lots of praises, lots of dance, and I remember on that day there was a lot of dust blowing up. G-Block Committee Maximum Prison. I'd just been sentenced to death, and I'd been told that uh, I'll be there until I'm certified dead. So you could be seeing my ghost today, <laughs> but just by God's grace and by God's goodness. We got to learn that the praises that I found there was of people who were focused on something. They were focused on a bigger thing than what they were going through at that moment. Death row was packed. Death row was crazy. Death row was torture. Everything. I mean, if you go to YouTube and Google the 15 worst prisons back then, committee was ranking there. We've had many stories about committee. I don't need to regurgitate that. And this was the first Alliance high school student going to death row. <laughs> <laughs> the key thing about Alliance is our motto is strong to serve. And when I went to Alliance as a 12-year-old, and I got that motto strong to serve, I wasn't told where I was going to serve. <laughs> and so I, I had to tell God, like, God, this is the craziest of jokes. I've been wrongly convicted, but I'm supposed to serve strongly on death row. I don't know. I don't know what that means. My background was very humble like most of us, or most of us who say it was. <laughs> my mom was my teacher from class one to class three. She's the only person I knew was bigger and taller than me. My dad was slightly shorter. And I mean, we were coming from a family of 12, and I was number nine back there. And so for the first three years, having my mom as my teacher, the class experience, the home experience, you know, you, you, you try to balance it. Going to class four meant that now I had to be broken off from mom's grip. And I wasn't a kind of an average student. I was doing well in school. And so back in Maseno, I grew up, love, family, everything together. Came to Alliance, it wasn't an easy journey, I remember that day. After you know, qualifying to go to Alliance, my dad took me to the railway station in Kisumu. I was 12 years old at that time. I had my big suitcase. And then you know, the train would bring you all the way to Kikuyu, then you get bus one number 102, you go to school. And I remember that day when we reached the train station, I was so excited that my dad was taking me to school. And he got me as far as the door of the train. And he told me, young man, now you're a man. Go to school. And that's why I told that joker there that they were taken. I took myself. <laughs> anyway, so on a light note. So I remember just walking into school, feeling overwhelmed, but also feeling excited that I had to take responsibility at a very young age. And that responsibility still walks me with me to this day. So walking into committee, finding praise and worship, and just sitting back there and listening to the, the guy who was preaching, was an inmate. And he was talking about some three young guys. I love working with youth because of that first sermon I had. And he was telling us about these three young guys who stood up to authority and said they were not going to bow to what they didn't believe in. They had death staring at them, but they say they are not going to compromise their faith. And so I learned about focus from the very first moment I entered into committee. I was hearing about focused guys. I was here, I had been told I should be strong to serve. And I had to, re, you know, to reimagine my life to where it was going to start. My kids had been taken away, hadn't seen them. And uh, yeah, going through that pain, and then I had to ask myself the big question. How was I going to walk through this journey? I'd been read a determinate sentence. And yet here I was believing that that sentence didn't matter. 
And from that very day, by the way, in committee, anyone who's, who's been in committee will tell you, I would wake up every day at five o'clock, take my shower, and say I'm going home. Every single day for the 18 years I was in prison, I always walked in that faith and in that purpose that that wasn't me. That sentence, that unjust sentence wasn't me. And I realized that many times, when we suffer loss, when we go through hard moments, we focus on the trouble, we focus on what's bringing us down, we focus on the pain, and we forget that there's the, the bigger picture about what brought you into that space and how you can get out of it. So to me, my focus from day one was how am I walking out of committee? And I spoke that to myself every day. That committee is not for me, it's there for a purpose, for a reason. What do I do when I'm here? And despite the pain, despite the separation, despite everything, I decided to make the best out of the worst. Some would say, you know, making, lemon, uh, I mean, making lemonade out of lemon. You could say whatever you want to call it, but to me it was a struggle because I still had to go through my appeal. I had to think about where my kids could be. I had to think about my in-laws and what they had taken me through. I had to think about my sick mom who had to take care of me and who still felt the pain of losing both her daughter-in-law and now her son. And one thing kept me going all the time. Faith and focus, faith, focus, faith, focus. It's just the one word which was focus, but it was underpinned by my faith. And I know many times when we go through hard things, we lose focus. Just a week ago, as we had here, when some things were happening in Boma, some of you lost focus, you know? Because we had put our faith in particular boxes that we expected to tick. And when we couldn't tick those boxes, then we lost faith. We lost focus. We started throwing barbs and words at each other. That's not what I learned in committee. Committee was love. We got to know that irrespective of our nationalities, our creed, our tribes, there was no tribe in committee. There was only one tribe, love. That's where you could take care of each other. And that's why I saw, if I remember well, one day we lost nine people on a trot, on the trot. There was a cholera outbreak. And... You know, cholera, you're not supposed to come close to someone who's infected. But people are forgetting everything else, and because they were seeing their friends going through, you know, that burden, they would carry their friends to the dispensary. By the time they came back, they had also gotten the infection. And that early morning, I remember, we lost nine people, you know, in less than 30 minutes. That pain you go through, and then you ask yourself, why is God sparing you? What is God teaching you through all this? Why should you not focus? That was the question I was asking myself. Why should I focus on the experiences I'm getting here? Not only to impact the lives of the fellow or my fellow inmates, but also the lives of people outside. And I remember very well in 2005 when this country was going through famine, and we came together in committee to raise food. You know, we decided to fast and pull our resources, pull our food, said we are going to donate to Kenyans this food. It wasn't easy because it came to us in a prayer. And reaching out to the officer in charge, when you know very well that you're not supposed to starve yourself in prison, you have to eat. He looked at us and said, is that what you guys have decided on death row? Yeah, 102 of us. He took it to the prison, 3,500 approved. It was taken to other prisons. Then all the 52,000 inmates in Kenya said, we are going to give our food to the people who need it more. Because we felt we were in prison, true, we're not using any energy in prison, why can't we donate that food? That came from faith. That came from the focus we had, that we had to do something at that particular moment. I know many times I've been caught up in situations where I have to ask myself, which way should I go? But I've always remembered one true north, my faith. It overcomes, it overrides everything at any given time. That despite the challenges, despite the circumstances, despite the pain, despite the loss, where is my focus? Because my focus is not limited by anything. Just like my faith is limitless. These three young people were being told here that unless they worshipped an idol, they were going to be killed. They had to say they don't mind 
the faith they have in their creator is limitless. So whatever happens to them, it doesn't matter. All they know is that they are not going to bow to that false thing. How many times do we go to that extent of just saying we are going to stand on the right side of history? How many times do we compromise our faith? How many times do we compromise what we believe in? How many times do we press send to that message that we know shouldn't go there? Those are the questions I ask myself. And so I find myself walking in this space where after all that happened, again, I get this in a prayer session, you need to do this for the young people. Crime C Power was actually formed on death row in committee. We didn't have a single cent. We didn't even know how it would run. We went and told the officer in charge, this is what we want to do. And I remember him asking me, Pete, you're on death row. You can't even walk out of that place. At that moment, I remember we were 13, 14 guys sleeping in an 8 by 7 cell, which is slightly the size of this space here. So 7 would be on this side, and 7 would be on this side. And somehow, every other day, we got up, and we thanked God for that. And so when we started Crime C Poor, it was about reaching out to young people. Majority, 75% of people in our prisons are young people. Majority don't know the law. Majority don't even know why they're there in the first place. And so it was, it was a lobby just to reach out to young people and tell them, guys, you can do something different with your lives. And in case you've been caught in crime and you're in prison, you can change your life for the better and make the best out of it. And that seed that was planted, and we started doing that on a small scale, now by God's grace, not only national, but also international. In that short period of time, just focus on one thing. The focus in the faith that God gave us that that could be carried through. So I just walk in that faith. I don't, you know, sometimes I want to share my testimony, and I fear that people would think I'm bragging. But the fact is, I can only brag about my creator. I can't brag about Pete. And so every single day, every single waking day for me is about keeping focus. Keeping focus to the limitless power of my creator. That is my life. And it makes it, you know, even in the hardest of moments, when I feel like all the chips are down and I should just give up, I get this urge, this strength, like we have to continue carrying on. Now, my challenge today to those who feel that they are limited in their spaces, where is your focus? Just get your focus right, get your true north right, and don't compromise on it. I've been stopped by cops and told that I was over speeding, and I tell them, no, I wasn't over speeding. That is way in Nakuru. And they tell me, now, <laughs> either to Chote, I'm a and I tell them, Guys, I've been there. <laughs> to end it. I'll let you know, I can't talk much about my case for the simple reason it's still in court. Because I took my case to court back in 2015, and I said I want to be exonerated. The president, His Excellency the President, released me in 2016, but my case was already live in court. And I remember meeting some of the people we are doing the case with and telling Pete, you're home now, withdraw this case. Tell them I didn't go to court to, to, you know, I didn't go to court to come home. I went to court because I believe in justice and I believe in a God of justice. So however long it takes, we have to get justice for the victim. And, and you know, just walking through that when I know it's so easy to corrupt my way through the justice system back then, and just saying I'm going to walk this path is the encouragement I want to give you today. That the person you believe in that creator you believe in is limitless. He cannot be limited by anything. Whether you're going through pain of divorce, whether you're going through loss of an election, whether you're going, whatever it is. No, there are some contestants who are here, I know. <laughs> whatever it is, and those who won, congratulations, by the way. Whatever you're going through, just keep your focus on where you know the victory comes from, not where the defeat is. I was in prison for 18 years. Not once did I go to hospital. Despite having slept on a bare floor, not once did I go to hospital. And I only used to quote what the Bible tells me, that his angels will cover me. Like, I walked in that blind faith, I walk in that blind faith. 
And that word is always there. It's always close by for us to grasp. It's always close by for us to take. It's yours for the taking because that word is limitless. Thank you.